Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. This is Ed Milet. Today is not a normal program. I have a true American hero sitting across the table from me here today. So if you don't recognize this face, let me tell you who he is. So this is Robert O'Neill. And um, we've had a lot of sports people on here, a lot of entertainers that in most people's minds are heroes. And then in life, you meet a real hero. Um, he doesn't consider himself one, but he is one. And so let me give him the proper introduction just so you know who this man is. 52 decorations in the military, two silver stars, four bronze star medals with valor, joint service commendation medal with valor, three presidential unit citations, two Navy, Marine, and Navy Corps combinations with valor, service, 400 different combat missions, 400. Um, if you've watched the movie Captain Phillips, this is the first guy onto the boat um, when the Somali pirates had that boat. If you've watched Lone Survivor, with uh, Marcus Luttrell. He was on that recovery mission. And by the way, <clears throat> he also killed Osama bin Laden. And so thank you for being here. I appreciate that. And like you mentioned too, it's not a hero thing. I was very fortunate to be with um, incredible teams I know you're from all listening. branches of the service. And everyone was there. And uh, the Captain Phillips thing, I wasn't one of the, was not one of the shooters. I was the lead jumper for that. And, yeah. and the snipers that were there um, with, uh, really no no time we're just we're watching to make sure nothing unsafe happened when they mm -hmm. shot which is incredible and, yeah uh, and it's an amazing journey all because of right place right time and right place right time positive attitude. And, and right man which we're going to talk about <clears> today <throat> and so also thank you for your service it was, it was an honor not just being here so thank you how's that for a hero everybody and so we're going to get into the mind of this man today we're going to talk about team building what he's up to today and obviously some of the great things that you've been a part of right. on the teams you were a part of and so all great things happen as being a part of a team both Certainly. you and i know that oh, yeah, yeah. but then there's blessing when when we when the opportunity arrives we meet it with our preparation which is what you that's did. exactly right to meet it with your preparation yeah. never the perfect plan because that's never going to happen hmm. <clears throat> like we uh we'll get into it later too but the bin laden raid we had the perfect plan hmm. and nothing nothing came to fruition nothing worked the, everything the, the, the worst possible thing that to happen happened wow okay <clears throat> let's get right into that right, okay let's do that first um let me ask you before we get to that i'm just curious why did you get in the military in the first place? The, that's another one too. It was never a plan. I was going to, I was actually playing college basketball and I was going to work okay. with my dad when I got out of college and okay. I got dumped by a girl and wanted to leave Butte, Montana. Come and, on. Yep. Um, the first line in my book, The Operator, it says, yeah. I owe my career as a Navy SEAL to a girl. And that was an accident too, because I didn't want to join the Navy. I wanted to join the Marines. Okay. So I, because I'm, I, I'm a hunter and I wanted to be a sniper and Marine snipers, Carlos Hathcock, you know, just yeah. kick ass. The right. uniforms, Marines. Right. Uh, so I went to join and as, again, as luck would have it, the Marine recruiter wasn't in there. The Navy guy was sitting there. And the only reason that I went to, oh to the Navy guy is because I had two friends I grew up with, Ben and Jim, who were Marines, two, they're two years older. Mm -hmm. um, and they told me that the Marine Corps is actually uh, part of the Department of the Navy. It's just the men's department. <laughs> so I okay. went to ask the Navy guy, um, okay. where's the, when's he come back from lunch? And yeah. he goes, why do you want the Marine? Yeah. And I said, uh, well, I want to be a sniper. And he's this clever yeah. recruiter. He was wearing khakis. He's a Navy chief. Yeah. Clever guys. Yeah. And he goes, oh, we have snipers in the Navy. Look no further. And he slowly said, or quickly said, um, you need to become a Navy SEAL first. No big deal. Then we'll send you to sniper <laughs> school. And I didn't know how to swim. Come and on. And this guy talked me into it because I remember being so dumb. I'm like, I'm naive, but this guy's a professional recruiter. Why would he lie to me? Oh, my gosh. That's and that's crazy. it. And then um, when I got in, he showed me the videos. I'm like, holy crap. I, I mean, I, I don't know these straw. I can't swim. And uh, I said, well, I'll be positive about it. I'll just I'll go to San Diego. I'll, I'll see this cool training. I probably won't make it. But then I'll go to the fleet and be in the Navy and have sea stories when I come back home to Maloney's Bar in Butte, Montana. But then I made it through. Are you being serious? I, that that's what happened. Yeah. So you ended up because the other recruiter no shows. He wasn't there. We didn't know I was coming in. I just went in to leave town because of the girl. Yeah. Oh my God. And that story's kind of common. Well, both of them that uh, people went to join the army, but they weren't there and they joined the Marine Corps. Yeah. And and like it's so funny. Like eighty percent of the all volunteer military is yeah. there because someone dumped them. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And men and women both. And you became a Navy SEAL but couldn't swim. Well, I learned. I, I had five months from the time I signed to till the time I left. And I had a friend I went to high school with who swam at Notre Dame. I ran into him by luck too at the pool. He was like, um, I've, ne I've never seen you at the pool before. What's going on? And I said, I just joined the Navy and I'm going to be a SEAL. And he goes, oh, not like that. You're not. And he, he taught me like the breaststroke. Unbelievable. Uh, so you know the breaststroke going on. And the side stroke. Okay, that's, that's incredible. So I, I have this theory I tell people all the time. I say that life doesn't happen 
for you or to you it happens for you mm -hmm. right and these things all it's amazing that the guy who ends up killing the most evil person of our time yeah. of the modern time ends up in the seal program if, by mistake if, by yeah. default because you, of a girl if you figure this um a, a, a semi-decent shape white kid that can't swim from Butte, Montana, yeah. becomes a Navy SEAL and ends up in Bin Laden's bedroom just because of a positive attitude. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you're from. You can do anything. Just keep your head in it. Oh my Avoid God. the negativity. Oh, my God. That's it. And, oh, my God. And that's proof. Yeah. I mean, I, I, call, I call my book The Operator not because yeah. I'm calling myself The Operator. I'm talking about the life of the operator. Yes. Every Ranger, every Green Beret, every Navy SEAL. And they all, the stories are similar. And it's yeah. the two things are positive attitude, sense of humor. Sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I did notice that about you. 